Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Nurlin Abu Sama. Okay, so I will be uh, teaching you about scanning electron microscope, SAM, and also transmission electron microscope, TEM. For this uh, topic, uh, you, you will be taking quiz 2 on this Thursday, 12 November at 11.15 a.m. until uh, 11.25 uh, a.m. So please make sure you can be there on time. And uh, for the final examination, this topic will cover about 20 marks. Okay, so now we start with scanning electron microscope, SAM. Okay, so this is the, uh, the instrument okay that can be seen uh, in our central lab okay so before we go through in details about uh, sam so this is uh, one example of um, the things that we can uh, study okay the parameter that we can study is the image okay and uh, so here you can see that from this the fruit fly okay from this fruit fly, you can see very clear what's on the eye of this fruit fly. So, this is the very important things in uh, scientific uh, finding so that uh, it can contribute uh, um, a very uh, important uh, findings from any uh, study or investigation. So, as an introduction, okay, for the scanning electron microscope. So, uh, this uh, instrument uh, used uh, for inspection uh, about the topography on of specimen or your sample at very high magnification by using a sim uh, piece of equipment, okay. And this is the instrument that called uh, scanning electron microscope. And uh, basically, uh, SAM has been used uh, in the analysis of um, to, to study the package crack, uh, the, the fracture on the surface, uh, either there is a bone failures and uh, physical defects. Okay, so basically, this is the, the things that um, uh, SAM can uh, study. Okay, as you all know that uh, uh, other than uh, SAM cannot um, be used uh, in order to study the topography of the specimen. Okay, so SAM is a quite unique instrument. Okay, and uh, what actually happened during uh, SAM analysis? Okay, a beam of electron is focused on a spot volume of the specimen. Okay, so uh, as you can see that the source of energy uh, that used in SAM, okay, is a beam of electron. Okay, so you can see that uh, the beam of electron is the source of energy. And uh, so from this uh, bombardment of electrons, it uh, change or transfer the energy uh, to the spot. Okay, so you can see that... Um, uh, the bombarding electrons, okay, uh, or so-called primary electrons, okay, uh, will um, dislodge the, the electrons, okay, from the specimen itself. So, uh, the dislodge electron, we also um, call it as a secondary electrons, okay. So, from the secondary electrons, it will attracted and collected by the detector, and then translate it into a signal. So, in order to produce the same image, okay, so by the way, uh, before we go through in detail, uh, you must know that uh, the output of SAM is the image, okay. So, in order to produce this output, okay, so you need to know that uh, electron beam is swept across are uh, being inspected producing many such signals okay so these are uh, signals uh, will be um, explained in detail uh, after this okay so 
So these are signals then amplified. Okay, so as you know that any signals will give a very low signal, and then it it is required to amplify the signal, and then analyze and translate it into image of the topography of your sample. Okay, spot of the on the your sample, and then uh, at the end the image will be shown on the cathode ray tubes. The the, the, this process is quite similar to the uh, television, okay? So, you can see uh, very clear the image, okay? Okay, next, uh, the signal, okay? So, basically, when the primary electrons bombard on the, your sample, so, after that, the emission will be uh, occurred, okay? So, from this emission, there are first... Uh, emission ray is a secondary electrons and this emission uh, come uh, from the specimen increase as the energy of the primary electron beam increase so basically the main of the the main signal is actually a uh, secondary electrons for some until okay so this um, uh, beyond this limit the collected secondary electrons diminish as the energy of primary in beam is increased okay so the detector will um, try to collect uh, the secondary electron signal and so that it can be converted to the um, to the uh, signal uh, as image Okay, so next, uh, aside from secondary electrons, the primary electron beam results in the emission of backscattered or reflected electrons. So basically, uh, instead of uh, secondary electrons, they are also we call as backscattered electrons or reflected electrons that also emit uh, from the uh, bombardment of the primary electrons. Okay. So backscattered electron possess more energy than secondary electrons, okay? But uh, the it depends on the detector that uh, if the detector um, is aligned uh, to the um, secondary electron area, so that it will detect the secondary electron, okay? So all emissions above 50 electron volts are considered to be backscattered electrons, okay? And uh, next, uh, Sam may be equipped with EDX analysis, and I hope that you will get used to this, like a uh, hyphenated method, like Sam, and then combined with EDX analysis. Okay, so Sam with EDX analysis system, okay, uh, is performed to investigate the elemental compositional analysis on your sample. Okay, on your specimen. So EDX is a tools or analysis instrument that can be used uh, to detect or to identify what is the composition of your materials of your sample. Okay, so what is EDX? EDX is the energy dispersive X-ray. Okay, so this is the the figure that uh, explain the bombardment of electron and then produce the emission of uh, signals. Okay, so in this case, the incident beam is the our primary electron, and then it will bombard on the spot of your sample. Not all the sample, but at one spot, and then after that, this electron. Mm -hmm will emit like this one this is a backscattered electron which produce high energy high energy compared to the secondary electron that's why it goes up a bit higher compared to the secondary electron and then at the same time it will uh, release also the cathode aluminescence and then at the same time it also emit the x-ray electron and um, auger electron Okay, so uh, many cases uh, they will have what we call as unscattered electron. Okay, but for Sam, the most important is the secondary 
electron okay and then you can see that also uh, we have in elastically scattered electron and also elastically scattered electron okay so both uh, in elastically and elastically uh, scattered electron uh, and also unscattered electron this is what we call as transmitted electron so this is the signal for them okay so um, for SAM the main signal is the secondary electron and also backscattered electron but don't get confused because um, uh, each time when the electron bombard on your sample all of this is the signal okay so you must uh, take note that it uh, actually depends on this on your sample okay so basically we can divide the signals into two broad categories the first one is electron signals and the other one is the photon signals so this is the setup for the instrumentation okay what is uh, actually happened in the SAM okay so it comes from the source of energy or the beam of electron comes from the electron gun so after uh, the electron um, gun is uh, function then the electron will go uh, to the anode and then it will uh, passing through the magnetic lens and then it will um, uh, have a, a passing through the backscatter electron detector and then it go through the specimen okay and then this is the secondary electron detector okay so it will detect all the secondary electron that emits from the bombardment of the primary electron okay so the idea of this uh sam sam also called as electron microscope eh? okay so electron microscope follow the same idea of optical microscope optical microscope ni uh this uh, uh basically we found it in the bio biology lab okay okay so in this uh, optical microscope they use electro, uh, they use light as the source of energy however for electron microscope they use electron as the source of energy okay okay next uh, this is the part for advantages and disadvantages of SAM so for the advantages you can see that um, SAM can uh, analyze almost all kind of samples conducting and non-conducting okay so basically if the sample is conducting so it does require a stain coating need uh, uh, stain coating okay uh, and after that um, uh, the advantages of SAM is uh, it based on surface interaction okay so um, totally de uh, to totally depends on the surface of interaction okay so no requirement of electron transparent sample okay and after that uh, the image uh, is actually a 3d uh, form of image okay so you will see clearly the image as you can see um, outside I mean the image is um, in a 3d form okay and then uh, what is the disadvantage of SAM so SAM is about a low uh, resolution okay uh, SAM always uh, we relate with low resolution okay so basically it uh, about a, f a few tens of nanometers okay the scale and uh, usually required a surface staining coating with metals of or for electron conducting so uh, why we need the surface stain coating because uh, we have a major problem in SAM uh, basically we called uh, basically this uh, problem uh, will occur okay especially for the conducting sample so um, the problem is actually we call as a uh, uh, charging okay the sample will uh, charge and the image will not uh, very good okay okay before we go through uh, in details about the image okay the 
and also the problem about the um, charging and uh, so we go for the field emission scanning electron microscope FASEM okay so uh, FASEM uh, is actually higher resolution resolution okay compared to SAM okay FASEM produce clearer less electrostatically distorted image with spatial resolution down to one and a half nanometer okay which is a uh, better than conventional SAM okay so in this case um, the the most important point for FASEM okay is it can reduce penetration of low kinetic energy electrons props closer to the immediate material surface so when uh, the penetration of low kinetic energy electrons reduce so the secondary electron will will um, increase because as you know that the secondary electron is the main uh, signal in this uh, SAM, for SAM, okay and after that uh, for SAM also um, uh, produce high quality of image and uh, low voltage image are obtained with negligible electrical charging of samples so basically for SAM uh, has been modified to um, um, to allow low voltage in, uh, low voltage of energy Okay, so we can see uh, that the charging problem is uh, reduced. Okay, when you use FASAM, and uh, so uh, to place the conducting coatings or insulating materials is uh, virtually eliminated. Okay, for FASAM. Okay, so what is the principle of operation? So basically. Uh, it also have an electron gun okay the same procedure okay and um, a field emission cathode in the electron gun of a scanning electron microscope provides narrower probing beams at low as well as high electro energy so this uh, improve the spatial resolution and also minimize the sample charging and damage okay so uh, what is the application for FASEM? Uh, we can use it on semiconductor sample or semiconductor device okay, to study the cross-section okay, of the semiconductor. And after that, also we also can learn about the advanced coating thickness okay, to see either it is a uniform or uh, non-uniform uh, determination. Uh, and then uh, we can also uh, investigate about the small contamination, feature geometry, and elemental composition measurement. Okay, so for the elemental com composition measurement, just like what I said just now, you need to equip uh, your SAM with uh, the EDX. So EDX can give you information about the elemental composition. So this is the comparison between light microscope and electron microscope. So you can see that light microscope is uh, rather cheap compared to electron uh, microscope. And then uh, for the electron microscope, it is um, cheap to operate. However, electron microscope is about uh, expensive, more expensive, because it, uh, it required to produce electron beam. And uh, for the light microscope, it is uh, small and can be a uh, portable okay so in this case this is the light um, light microscope and this is the electron microscope okay okay so uh, for the light micro microscope uh, the size is a bit small okay and electron microscope the size is large and it does require a special rooms okay okay so um next uh, point is it is uh, for the lab microscope is a bit simple and easy to prepare i mean for the sample and then for the electron microscope it is a bit complex in uh, sample preparation okay and after that uh, we have a material rarely distorted by preparation okay and for the electron microscope preparation distorts material 
okay okay next uh, this uh, for the lab microscope vacuum is not required okay however for electron microscope the vacuum is required okay so in order to remove um, uh, in order to make sure that your sample can be used in the vacuum state so you need to make sure um, that your sample is totally dry okay and when your sample is totally dry and then the vacuum will be at a stable condition and then you can start analyze your sample okay next uh, natural color of sample maintain so basically you can see the natural color but for electron microscope the image are basically uh, in black and white color okay and uh, for the lab microscope it will magnify the object uh, only up to 2000 times but for electron microscope it will magnify the image over 500,000 times okay so you can see the accuracy there okay electron microscope is uh, um, better okay compared to light microscope and then uh, for the light microscope uh, you can your specimen can be living or dead but for the electron microscope the specimen must be dead okay um, as they must be fixed in plastic and viewed in vacuum okay and the last one is a state of offer needed to make the cell uh, visible okay for light microscope and for the electron microscope the electron beam can damage okay and then they must be stained with electron dense chemical so basically they will use osmium lead or gold so now we go for the the characteristic or the what are the output that we can get from SAM okay first is topography so what is topography is the surface feature of an object or how it looks the texture okay so basically this is uh, relates to the topography okay morphology morphology is the shape and the size of the particles making up the object so you can see directly the relation between the structure and the materials properties okay and then uh, composition the elements and compounds that the object is composed of and the relative amount of them direct relationship between composition and materials property as i mentioned just now that if you want to study the composition of your materials okay you must make sure that um the stem must be equipped with edx okay that is um, the important thing that you need to know and the last one is the crystallography information this uh, information tells you about how the atoms are arranged in the object direct relation between this arrangement and materials properties okay so this is one example of the output from sam okay the same image okay so conducting and semiconducting materials okay so this is the the scale okay basically the image will comes with scale like this image this is the scale okay and basically they will also give you the information about the parameter that has been uh, used to get that image okay okay so basically um the the utility of instrument is actually depends on the purpose of your study so basically when we use a uh, like optical uh, microscope optical microscope so the range of uh, the range of the size of your sample must be at my macroscopic range okay this range okay however for sam we can use it for uh, mesoscopic so mesoscopic is in between uh, macroscopic and the atomic microscopic okay so uh, starting from them until xrt you can use uh, in this range the atomic microscopic okay so 
to prepare your specimen or your sample uh we need to some 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 condition we need to use the coating so why we use the coating is to avoid the charging okay so in order to avoid this charging you can use a uh, like sputter sputter coating with carbon chromium or aurum and palladium okay and also you can use carbon tape carbon paint and also in foil okay so uh the main reason of charging is because of the the deflection of secondary electron okay the deflection of secondary electron okay so this is uh, one example of the charging uh, effect okay the charging effect of on the image you can see it's like uh, distorted okay the image is distorted and you cannot see um very clear at that point okay at this range it is like um emit a photon or emit uh, something like light okay that comes out from the sample okay okay so now we go for the transmission electron microscope them so in order for you to understand to understand okay them also uh, implement the concept of optical microscope okay so what is the uniqueness of them okay the uniqueness of them is the ability to obtain full morphological okay either um, a grain size grain boundary interface okay, secondary phase and distribution defects and denature so basically when you use them you can get the crystallographic properties okay you can study the crystallographic properties and also the atomic structure okay so um basically uh them also we can investigate about the electronic structure and also the coordination number data from the sample okay so them is the most efficient and versatile technique for the characterization of materials okay so what is TAM okay TAM is transmission electron microscope a beam of highly focused electrons are directed towards a thin sample so you need to know that your sample must be um, very very thin sample okay so basically when we want to use TAM we will prepare first our sample and then uh, we can uh, and after that we can run our sample okay so uh, basically we can say that TEM is a um, is a higher resolution compared to SAM okay okay so this is the instrument of TEM okay so you can see that it's um, more or less like sam okay so what is in the tem okay so you can see that in tem we have a column okay we have in the column we have electron gun we also have the eds detector eds eds is equals to edx eh? so you don't have to um uh, to uh, get confused eds and edx the same thing okay and in here, in this column also, we have the condenser and a condenser lens, objective lens, okay? So we have lots of lens here, okay? And then in here, we have the specimen holder, okay? And also we have the magnifying lens. So in this uh, part is the viewing chamber. The camera chamber is in here, okay? And then this is the TV or the PC monitor. You can see the image, okay? Okay, so time is uh, actually more expensive compared to uh, to optical microscope. Okay, so this is your sample chamber. It also required to be vacuum state in your vacuum state. So you need to make sure that your sample is uh, totally dry. Okay, before you can use your 
uh, before you can run um, using them okay so this is the interaction what is actually happened on your specimen or your sample so this is a very thin specimen okay so this is the elect the incident beam or we call as the primary uh, electrons beam okay and then it will for, uh, produce backscatter electron and also secondary electrons at the same time it will also uh, emits the x-ray uh, electron so this is basically they will uh, collected by eds okay but uh, the most important here is uh, for them the signal is not the secondary electron okay but the signal is the transmitted electron and also elastically scattered electron so this is the two signal the main signal that will be collected by the that will be collected by the TEM okay so that is the main thing or the the major difference okay in between uh, SAM and TEM okay so how you can prepare your sample so uh, before you send your sample for TEM analysis you must know that uh, your sample will be uh, uh, you, you cannot get back your sample okay okay so here okay just like for this example okay so this is the the the, the place that we can put our sample here okay so the size of the mesh is about three millimeters okay and uh, here is the example of image okay that can be seen on the grid okay on the grid and uh, also we can put your uh, our specimen on the carbon film okay okay so the, uh, this is uh, one example of uh, on how to uh, uh, to take your sample okay for, um, by using the focus ion beam so this is the part of a feller semiconductor uh, spot <clears throat> So you can see that you can have a cross section there, okay, and then you can use the FIB, the focus ion beam, and after that you you just make sure that it doesn't affect the the failure part, the failure spot, and after that you can simply take the failure spot um, out from the sample, okay. So you can study the the same the the so that you can study or you can run by using the them to see the the destructive of the sample okay okay so we also will really can use the ion amylene a ceramic okay so basically if the sample is in a powder form so we we will use this um, ultrasonic cut grain okay to make it a bit um the size um smaller okay and also we uh, we have the what we call as the uh, ultra microtomy so this ultra microtomy uh, this method uh, use diamond as a knife blade so basically uh, uh this uh, knife Okay, mainly for the sectioning uh, biological materials okay and uh, so this is the advantages and disadvantages of them okay so as you know that them will produce high resolution image okay as small as 0 0.2 nanometer and this them is a direct image uh, of crystalline lattice so you can investigate the structure or the crystal lattice of your sample and it also delineate the defects inside the sample okay and uh, we also have uh, no metallic stain coating needed 
okay so we don't have to do the stain coating and then uh, this time also uh, they use the electron diffraction technique okay so you can see like the lattice parameter measurement you can see the defect okay of the semiconductor okay so this is the ma mainly things that you can see uh, if you use them however um, to prepare an electron transparent sample from a bulk is difficult so like if your sample comes from bulk so it's a bit difficult uh, to 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 prepare okay because you need a lot of or we call as a complex uh, preparation of sample then you can run by using them so this is the things that you need to to know before you can run by using them okay so this is the example of the output from them okay the image of a uh, nano belt so this is uh, what you can see Okay, so you can see this is at scale 200 nanometers. Okay, so you can see like this is the nano belt. Okay, very clear. Okay. okay so next, uh, the summary of electron microscope component. So basically, uh, when we learn about my electron microscope, they are totally same. Okay, totally same. But the only difference is the energy, the source of energy, and also the signal that uh, they, uh, what they collected after the bombardment of electron, okay? And, uh, okay, the first one is the electron optical column, consists of electron source, okay? Um, also, magnetic lens and magnetic coils, okay? And also, the aperture to define the beam, okay? And number two is the vacuum system, it consists of chamber which hold vacuum pump to produce vacuum. Okay, so in order to make sure that the the vacuum system is good, okay, so we must uh, uh, totally um, make our sample uh, dry first, okay, and after that you can uh, run by using electron microscope, okay. And uh, in the vacuum system also, there is a valve, okay? This valve is to, the function of this valve is to control the vacuum gauge uh, to monitor vacuum, okay? So basically, before we can run by using uh, SAM or TAM, uh, we must make sure that the, the sample chamber must be at vacuum state, okay? If the vacuum state is not achieved, so... Um, the analysis will not uh, function okay so this is the thing that you you need to know before you can run the by using electron microscope okay next is the signal detection and display consists of detectors which collect the signal okay uh, and some some condition they will use the to uh, equip the electron microscope with edx or eds okay Electronic also um, <coughs> the signal detection and display consists of electronics which produce an image from the signal. Okay, so that's all for SAM uh, and TAM, and I hope you can understand very well and be prepared for quiz two and also final exam. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.